If you could see out my craft room window right now, you would see a lot of snow and you would also be able to sense it's freezing here in Illinois and I am so over it. So I've decided to get the inside of my house spring ready and hopefully the weather will take a hint and follow shortly after. I don't know if that's how that works, but we're gonna try it anyway. Today specifically, we are focusing on Easter DIYs because Easter is early this year on March 31st. So we are going to get up, get DIYing and get all that stuff ready. So it is going to be done by the time the holiday hits and you've got some time to enjoy it. So sit back, relax. I've got a ton of Easter DIY and decor inspiration for you today and let's hit it. All right, craft buddies, buckle in, because here we go. We're going to start with a twofer, a DIY, and a decor idea for your mantle or any open wall space that you have. You're going to grab some of these dyeable plastic Easter eggs, and these things are awesome because they're super lightweight, and you can take a drill and easily add a hole to both the top and bottom to create egg-shaped beads, essentially. I'm grabbing my doll needle, which is a must-have for me when I'm making garlands so i will link that down below if you want to get your hands on one it is such a game changer it will take away the frustration of trying to get the jute twine through anything that's longer than an average bead i even use them for regular beads like i'm doing here i did three beads in an egg three beads in an egg and i ended up using about 18 or so eggs and then I tied some loops on either end and used these command strips that I love to hang garlands with on my mantle. I just leave them there and I can do everything from winter all the way back around to Christmas on it. Now, if you are looking for some color instead of just a neutral base for this decor, you are going to grab some foam eggs or you can also grab some colorful eggs that you can drill the holes in like I just showed you. For this one though, because they're foam eggs, all we're going to do is just take these little hangers off from these Easter tree eggs from Dollar Tree and use that down needle again to just go up through the center. Now, this is going to have a decent amount of fallout and you guys know how I feel about glitter. If you're new here, I hate glitter, point blank, but... If you want some color and some sparkle like this, you can take it outside after you string them up in the pattern that you want, and you can spray it with either clear sealant or some hairspray. That's going to make it so the fallout doesn't happen and you don't look like you had a glitter monster throw up all over your house because that is just totally not my vibe but the shimmer is nice to have sometimes then on top of that whether you're going neutral or color I like to add a little bit of a festive banner and I started making these for Easter and spring last year these are free printables over on my blog you just print them out I like to use cardstock you can cut them out and then mark where you want the holes I usually eyeball one and then I use that as a guide to mark it on all the other ones so that things will hang straight and not wonky I I also like to do two holes because that helps it so it will hang flat as well. I decided to do one line happy with two pictures and then the word Easter with two pictures and then I just strung up the jute twine. I made sure to put the jute twine mostly behind the image so then that way there wasn't a strip of jute twine across the front. I like that look but you can do whatever you're feeling and then I'm going to hang that up just like I did my other garlands. Then while you're decorating the rest of your mantle, something else to keep in mind is to shop your house. These containers are actually from Christmas. They say the most wonderful time of the year, but you flip them around, no one's the wiser, and you can get a lot more bang for your buck. So if you've got containers like that, you can really make things stretch much longer than just one season, which helps with storage and with budgets, because we are not trying to blow all of our money on decor, but we also want to have a decorated house. Here is how the mantle turned out. I love the little pops and nods to Peter Rabbit. The spring colors, it is so fun and I cannot wait for the sun to come out here in Illinois and for it to feel like spring. I'll also be sharing some decor hacks with you in the video and here is this first one. If you have some of these large Easter tree ornaments or just eggs that won't stand up, all you have to do is remove anything from the bottom. So here I'm removing the hangers and add a little piece of wood. This is just scrap wood that I had, but you could also use like cut up paint stir sticks and it's gonna make those eggs stand up and then you can put them in a line, add them to a vignette, quick and easy, and they're not gonna fall over on you. Now, if you fell in love with these bunnies like I did, let me show you how I duped them from Pottery Barn. If you're new to the craft buddies or new to my channel, I love to show you how you can DIY instead of buy items from high-end stores like Pottery Barn to save literally hundreds of dollars. This is a great example. They wanted $207 for these terracotta bunnies. So instead I went on a hunt. I found some ones that I liked. You could find them literally anywhere. I ended up going with these from Hobby Lobby from their general section for Easter decor, as well as this one from their garden section. 
The first thing I needed to do when I got home is neutralize the color on the bunnies. So I mixed some baking soda with some white acrylic paint and I painted the entire bunny. That just allowed me to get the blue and the brown covered so that they looked like they came from the same set. They don't have to be perfectly covered. You just want to give them kind of a base coat. And then I did two browns that I had in my stash of paints, territorial beige and a khaki. I mixed that in with some white and some additional baking soda. The baking soda is just going to puff up a little bit and give you the look of that faux pottery. I didn't need it to be too flaky, so I didn't add a ton, probably like a tablespoon of baking soda to the amount of paint I had on the plate. I'm working it into all of the different areas and I also went through with a little bit of antique wax, which you could also use dark brown paint and buffed it in while the lighter paint was still wet to give me that kind of chippy aged pottery look that the inspiration had. Now you may have to do a couple coats, but get through the process and figure out how much you want it to be covered. I didn't want it to look perfect, but I also wanted it to cover the blue and the other color. So here's where we ended up. Once that was all dry, I'm using 220 grit sandpaper to just rough up areas that would normally get wear and tear if they were old, like the feet, these legs, the top of the ears, the nose, things like that. And that is really going to make it look like the inspiration. My last step after I did all those painting techniques was to spray it with a clear coat so then that way the paint with the baking soda wouldn't chip off. Now you want them to look chippy but you don't want them to actually chip on you so that will help with that. I love that you could display these on their own in the set of three. They also complement little vignettes or you could put them next to a printable. I'm so happy with how these turned out and if you compare them 207 to about $44 all in for mine. So still not the cheapest DIY but way cheaper than Pottery Barn. I'm so glad you decided to hit play on this video today and that you're joining me for all of these Easter DIYs. If you're a craft buddy, thank you and welcome back. And if you're not already a craft buddy, no worries. You can hit subscribe and then you can come back and DIY with us each and every week. I share a ton of things from free cut files and printables to wood builds, seasonal content, all things in between. So if you like decorating your house and DIYing, you're definitely going to want to join us. Also, if you want to join my email list, I send out a new email every time I post a new video. You can either scan this QR code or click the link down in the description. Did you know that you can grab these plates at Dollar Tree and turn them in to amazing seasonal decor for your table? I like to measure the center and then I cut out a decal to fit that center of the plate. So this one happened to be four inches wide and I cut out this cute bunny that I got from Design Bundles, which I will link down below for you. I also have a similar bunny in my free files pack for today's video. You're going to weed it out and just take some regular transfer tape. This is from Expressions Vinyl. I'll have all my Cricut favorites down below and you can go ahead and apply it right to the center of your plate. Now these are purely decorative. You are not able to eat off of these because the vinyl isn't sealed, but I use them as decor. You can put them at each place setting with a cute little napkin or a place card, and it just adds some fun and festiveness to your tablescape for only $1.25 and some scrap vinyl per plate. In the spring mystery box last year, one of my challenge items were these shower curtain rings. So I decided to make this Kirkland's dupe with them. You're going to open the shower rings. These came from Dollar Tree and then I am using these little embellishment carrots from Michaels. I used some of this orange raffia I got from Amazon and I used some hot glue to help it stay adhered so that I could wrap it all the way around the napkin ring. Once you got all the way around, I used some more hot glue to adhere it so it wouldn't unravel. And then we're going to take a little bit more hot glue and just add this cute little carrot embellishment. And that's it. So quick and easy. Just slide your napkin in there and it will be the perfect companion to your cute little bunny plates. I love these. They look just like the inspo and you can make them for so much less. Another quick and easy DIY for Easter is this wooden cross. You can usually find these or the ones that hang at Dollar Tree and I decided to stain mine in weathered oak. It's this really pretty like light gray color and I thought this fit perfect. Then I cut out He Is Risen. This is another free file I'll have for you but you can cut it out in whatever font that you want if you want a different one. I applied it to the center of the cross. It's really simple but it is also really beautiful and it is a nice addition to my Easter decor. One of my pieces of decor that I get the most questions on is my boxwood wreath for my door. I haven't been able to find one to purchase like it, so I decided to make one. 
You can get one of these grapevine wreaths at any craft store. This came from Walmart. It's a 12 inch one. And then I also grabbed these boxwood picks from Walmart as well. I needed about six picks to create this size wreath. So you're going to want to have more if you want to make a larger wreath. And I originally started with floral tape, but it didn't work. So I decided to use some Dollar Tree jute twine after I chopped the individual pieces off of the pick. And then I just started tying it around. And as you can see, it's starting to make this beautiful full wreath. Once I covered the entire thing, which took me about 15 to 20 minutes while I was watching a TV show, then I used some hot glue around the outside for any pieces that weren't laying the way that I wanted them. Then you can leave it as is for every season, or you can do what I did a couple years ago as a Kirkland stoop. I took these Dollar Tree carrots, glued them on top of the boxwood, and this turned out so pretty. And this is easily something you would pay 40, 50, 60 bucks for at a high-end store that you can make yourself for much cheaper. If you're looking for a wreath idea with a little bit more color, no worries, I've got you covered there too. We're gonna dupe this high-end tulip wreath by heading to Michael's, grabbing some of these spring tulip bushes. I grabbed six of them, as well as a Dollar Tree wreath form for $1.25. So I have my spray paint tent set up in the garage because it's a little chilly in Illinois and I love this thing. It is so nice. And then I took some smoky beige to spray paint the outside of the wreath form. Now that is totally optional, but when you're working with lighter color flowers like this, I like to have a lighter color behind the wreath form. So you can if you want, if not the black will work. So then I'm taking my tin snips like I did before. I'm removing all of the individual pieces. And then I'm gonna start by taking groups of three, tying the bottom with some jute twine and making sure I have some additional ends so that I can tie it onto my wreath form. Now, I don't use a lot of hot glue, if any, on wreaths. I like to tie my greenery and florals on with jute twine. I think it's more forgiving that way. The jute twine blends in and it looks more natural and kind of rustic in your wreath. And it also is easier to slide your pieces up and down the wreath form rather than gluing them because I like to adjust until the very end, even after I think I'm done with the wreath. So once I went around the outside with the groups of three, I went back through on the inner ring of the wreath and I'm adding groups of two there. Then once I got to a spot where I felt like I needed to really see it hanging up, I hung it up on the door to my craft room, just on a wreath hook, so I could add the pieces and really see how it was gonna hang. Because it's one thing to make something sitting on the table, but then it's another thing to hang it up and kind of see where things are gonna fall. So once I knew it was full enough to my liking, I went back through with some smaller pieces of jute twine to tie some of the pieces of tulips to different parts of the wreath form. That's gonna make it so this is gonna continually be a circle and things aren't gonna fall, things aren't gonna move, and it's really gonna give you that nice round look. And then you can be done there. You can absolutely leave it as is. I think this is beautiful. They did have white tulips. So if you like that vibe, that is great too. But I loved these colors. I also decided to add this Happy Easter Cottontail Farms sign that I got at Dollar Tree recently. It's the perfect size for this setup. And also this line art is really popular at the higher end stores right now. And so I thought this was a very nice nod to that high end dupe look. One of my absolute favorite things to make for Easter are these felt carrots because they are so easy and so cute. Start with a piece of felt and a rectangle shape and the larger your rectangle, the larger your carrot. Draw a line of hot glue down the long side and then you're gonna roll it into a cone shape. Make sure everything is adhered there and then we are going to cut straight across the top to create just a little cone that's gonna make the base of our carrot. Now, I like to stuff it with polyfill, but you could honestly use anything you have on hand. You could even put tissue paper in there. You can get creative. Then I am taking a piece of green felt, creating some long little fringes here, and then I'm using hot glue to glue it around to create that top little area. You could also use raffia if you have that on hand or even green Dollar Tree jute twine. Then with the mixture of hot glue as well as some twine, I'm going to hook that stem into the top of my carrot and these are good to go. 
I have used a variety of different materials for this as well. So you can go traditional here with the orange felt. You can also use different fabrics and they also mix in really well if you already have some carrots, but you want to make a fuller arrangement like I did here. I started with a doble. I got a Hobby Lobby. I mixed in some of these plaid ones as well as the ones I made. And this is so quick and easy to put together. So cute for a dining room table and it won't take you very long at all. hopping back on the dupe train for this next one because I love high-end art for all seasons but with like 60 to 80 dollars a pop being the price tag it's way too much so what I like to do is take inspiration from those high-end artwork pieces and create some free printables for you guys so you can download them and print them out and add them to your own decor now this frame is actually a DIY itself this is from my one by two video that I made last year it was one of my most popular ones of 2023 so I have another one coming up shortly I'm so excited about that one but you can make this add the mat and then just swap out the printables I do this in my office slash craft room every year you just tape it to the mat it's good to go and I have a ton of options that you could add to your frame now don't worry you don't have to build your own frame you can just grab any of them that you find or ones that you have in your house I love to go to Hobby Lobby or Walmart to get really pretty affordable options I have got the gamut, a ton of options in my printable pack, over 20 options. So if you scan this QR code or head to the link in the description, you can download all of these over on my blog so that you can get decorating for Easter and spring and not break the bank. All right, craft buddies, it's been a jam-packed video so far, but I've got a ton more coming your way. So be sure to head down to the comments and leave me some sort of comment saying I'm still here or I'm sticking with you, emoji something, so I know you stuck with me. Now for this next one, this is a mystery box challenge DIY. I got this cutlery set from my friend Kelly Barlow over at KB Creations in a Box last year. And I decided to use some of my felt scraps and my Cricut to create these cute little pouches. So I was inspired by another creator on Cricut Design Space because you can now share projects and things like that. And so I've shared this. So all you guys have to do is go in and click make it if you want to make these. You can go in and customize if you just want one of the three options. But it's going to have both the felt information as well as the heat transfer vinyl that I'm going to add to this. So I did a fresh farmer's market, a Easter one, and then I also did a St. Patrick's Day. So when it all cuts out, you're going to have a cream piece of felt or a lighter color, whatever you opt for. And then you're going to have two pieces of your main color. I put my frame around the cream piece just to make sure I was lining up my heat transfer vinyl correctly. And then I'm using my little Cricut Easy Press Mini to press it on there. Now, I decided to do the pressing first because if you press on top of hot glue, it's just going to remelt on you. And then I just use some hot glue to apply it. Now you wanna make sure you don't add any to the top so that it stays open like a little flap. So I added those into the little flap, added some jute twine and voila. Now the great thing is, like I said, this is a ready-made project on Cricut Design Space. Just head down to the description and there will be a link for you. Once the screen pops up, just click open in Design Space or you can head over to my profile and you can follow me in Cricut Design Space as well. I absolutely love this. I'm making more of these for my St. Patrick's tablescape because how cute are these? And they would also double as little treat containers. So if you want to add some like jelly beans or a candy bar, you can do that as well in these little pouches. They don't just have to be for cutlery. Ooh, I love these so much. Whether you just got a Cricut or you are a Cricut veteran, I want to make sure you're aware of an event that I am a speaker at next week if you're watching this the day or the weekend that this video goes up. The event is from February 5th through the 9th and it is called the Cricut Craft Fest. Think of it as a big conference with a bunch of rooms filled with Cricut experts ready to teach you for free how to use your machine and give you all of the free files you need to create the projects along with them. Each day there are eight or nine classes that you can watch from from 9 a.m. Eastern Time all the way to 8.59 a.m. Eastern Time the next day. You can watch them on demand, download the files for free, and then you can learn from all those teachers. Now, if you don't want to try to cram all of those classes, all 45 plus of them in a five-day window, which would be really hard for me, especially during a work week, they also offer a VIP pass, which is currently available at the early bird price. So if you grab that early bird price, you can go ahead and watch the videos right away. So if you want to learn more about your Cricut, that is definitely a 
great investment to make. And I'm also doing a fun giveaway as part of the event. If you purchase the VIP pass through my link, I'm doing a fun little cricket zoom call as well as a grand prize of a one on one call with me. So I'll have more information about that down below. And here's the QR code you can scan if you want to grab your free ticket. If you loved that last cricket project and want to learn more about your machine. This is definitely an event for you. Up next, we are going to make this adorable bunny reverse canvas, and I'm also going to show you how you can make it as a wood sign with the same file. So to make the reverse canvas, you're going to want a wrapped canvas, and you're going to want something a little bit better than a Dollar Tree one because you're going to want a thicker border. We're going to take a flathead screwdriver or any other means that you have to remove staples, get all of those off of there, and then we're going to remove the staples completely to free that fabric from the outside. Now, the reason I said you want a nicer one than a Dollar Tree canvas is because I really like these thicker borders. So if you're going to get one from Michael's Hobby Lobby, Joann's, you're going to get a nice thick border like this one. And it's going to just make the project look better overall for just a couple more dollars. Now you can use heat transfer vinyl, but I also wanted to mention that you can use sublimation and or Cricut infusible ink to create a seamless look of your reverse canvas. So this is a file I got from Etsy. I will link it down below. I'm using it on both of them. So you can cut it on whatever material you want. And for infusible ink, if you haven't used it before, I have a full materials guide that you can check out. Now to layer it, I also used a little bit of heat transfer vinyl to cut out these cute glasses that I just grabbed in design space to size to my file. And I'm carefully removing all of these little bits for the infusible ink. It's basically a big sheet of sublimation ink that you cut to the shape that you want instead of printing it to the shape that you want. I'm gonna trim down that outer piece once the stain and everything has dried, and I'm going to get my bunny in the right spot. I also like to use a little bit of heat resistant tape so it doesn't move on me, as well as butcher paper or a Teflon sheet. Infusible ink is pressed at 395 for 40 seconds, and you wanna make sure you press straight down and pull up. If you have an auto press or something that will push for you, that's helpful so it doesn't move, but you could easily do it by hand like I'm doing here. Then once that was done, I added my cute little glasses, stapled it back to the frame, and it's good to go. This is one of my favorite Easter things I have ever made, and you could easily, like I said, do the heat transfer vinyl, so use black and then the purple heat transfer vinyl and just layer it that way, but I think it is super adorable. To do the second variation of it, I took one of these wood canvases I got at Target on clearance, and you can get these literally anywhere. I like to stain the outside and then paint the inside so it looks like I created a wood border. I'm just using the color sandstone to do a beige background. I needed to do like two coats, and then I'm measuring to see how big I need to cut my bunny, which ended up being about eight inches wide because I wanted to give myself breathing room around the outside. This time I am just cutting it on regular vinyl instead of the infusible ink. And then you want to carefully weed it. And then I'm going to apply it with some paper transfer tape. Now with it being regular vinyl, I did need to do a reverse weed. So what that means is I'm applying the transfer tape before I weed it out. And then I am peeling back the pieces from the outside. That just helps get a lot of those little pieces to stay. Then you can take your little weeding tool, pull out the pieces, kind of like you would with heat transfer vinyl, and that helps get all those little teeny pieces so you aren't weeding that traditionally and then wanting to throw it in the garbage. Once my black vinyl was added for the bunny, I added my purple glasses. Both of these are just regular vinyl. And then to give it a little bit more contrast, I added a little bit of jute twine. This just goes to show that when I show you a cut file, you can use it in a ton of different ways, especially my free ones. So it is great to have the file and then you can either make exactly what I make or do your own spin on it. As I've started to browse all of the Easter decor hitting the websites and shelves for the high-end places like Pottery Barn, William Sonoma, West Elm, etc., I'm seeing Peter Rabbit everywhere. It is so cute. The pastels are super in this year. And so I'm going to show you how you can get this look for a fraction of the cost. So to add my little Peter Rabbit onto those various mediums that you saw before, I'm starting in Canva and I'm finding a variety of Easter watercolor images that I want. This will be a free printable over on my blog, so you don't have to do this work, but if you're looking to do other themes or flowers or something like that for spring, this is how you would do it yourself. I'm making them small and I'm arranging them on the sheet so I can essentially print my own napkins onto this tissue paper. 
Now to do that, we have to put the tissue paper on some sort of carrier sheet so it's not gonna rip up in the printer. So this is just regular old white tissue paper. You can use any light color. And I am trimming it down and taking just some regular old scotch tape and taping it around the outside. The key here is that you wanna make sure there's enough space that you can tape it. The tape will adhere to your paper, or in my case here, cardstock, and it's not gonna hang over the edge so it doesn't get jammed in your printer. Once I got the edges all done, I inserted it into my printer and you just wanna know which side needs to be up or down to be printed on. The goal here is to make sure that your design has a thick border around the outside because we don't wanna print on the cardstock or the tape. So then once I hit print, I sent it and I was hoping it would work. And it did. So now I have basically my own napkin that I can decoupage with. So I did a variety of different sizes of those images and the first set I wanted to put on this Dollar Tree tag. And so I cut out this cute little Peter Rabbit and I trimmed as close as I could to the whiskers, but I figured the white would kind of blend in with the decoupaging. So I wasn't super concerned. I just didn't want huge chunks of white on there. You could also print it on its own and then cut it to the size of the tag, but I wanted the wood to show through. Then we're taking some Mod Podge and we don't want a crazy amount here. It's just a light coating so the things will stick down. And I'm working my way from top to bottom to make sure it's all adhered. Use your fingers carefully to make sure there aren't any bubbles. And then once it dries, seal the top with another coat of Mod Podge. Super quick and easy and think about it. How cute would this be with family photos or a saying? Or you could even scan and then print a kid's like drawing or handwriting. The sky's the limit with this technique. I also did the same thing on these wood eggs that I got a pack of three for $3 at the Target dollar spot. I also grabbed some larger sizes of the wood eggs at Michael's. Really the main difference is you just need to print items that are larger and if you get the same size eggs as I did, you can print my printable directly from my blog and you won't have to worry about resizing, but you could also resize yourself. I did a really cute little outline with some greenery of Peter Rabbit. I did just a Peter Rabbit and then I did a variety of different images on these smaller ones. You could really do so many things with this technique and if you are loving the Peter Rabbit vibes this year, I have a whole video showing you how to do more DIYs as well as how I decorated this cute little tiered tray. I made these mini books, a little pop-up Peter Rabbit, tons of options. So I will link that down below if you're interested in more DIYs for either Easter or for an upcoming party that's Peter Rabbit themed. I've gotten a lot of comments from you guys that you want to see more wood projects and I am happy to oblige because I love wood projects. So I was inspired by this Kirkland sign and I decided to use some scrap wood to make it into a tray. So I started by taking my scrap wood piece and tracing with just a spray paint cap. I just found whatever I had that was circular and I created a little stencil essentially in the corner. Then using that piece on all the other corners, I went around and marked it so that I could use my jigsaw and make this curved edge around all of it. Now if you want to just do a regular rectangle you could easily do that but I just thought this added some nice fun character to the board and it also helped me clean up those rough edges from this scrap piece of plywood. After I gave it a really good sand with my orbital sander I went through and stained it with this dark walnut stain just to give it a similar look to that inspo piece and then I used my Cricut Maker 3 but you could use any Cricut that you have to create a stencil that mimics the inspiration. So I just like to use permanent vinyl as a stencil. You can also use Quick Cover from Dollar Tree. There are a ton of different options on how you can stencil and I've got videos on it. So whatever you like to do. The thing that I think is a non-negotiable though is this paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. Now it has been going in and out of stock. I hear you guys. So there is an Amazon version of it, essentially a dupe. I will link that down below. If you can't get the Expressions Vinyl kind, it will work very similar, but it's gonna allow you to apply the stencil, which you have weeded backwards onto your sign and not have to worry about it ripping a paint or not releasing your stencil. And before I go through and paint, I like to seal everything with a coat of Mod Podge. This is just going to help with bleeding. If I were to paint the sign instead of stain it, I could do an initial coat of that paint color, but you can't really do a sealing coat of stain. So that's why I use the Mod Podge. Then to get the color on there, I'm using white acrylic paint that I am applying with a disposable makeup sponge. This is one of my favorite ways to do it. I dab up and down, so I'm not pulling paint in any direction. 
And then when it's about 50% dry, I am peeling off that piece of permanent vinyl that I used as a stencil to reveal my design. The breakaway of the vinyl that you're seeing here is totally normal. You could just take it piece by piece. And then I'm also going through and removing any of those little bits within any of the letters. Then my last step was to add some handles and seal it. So these handles are from Menards. I went through, figured out where they needed to be, and then I had to mark so I could drill my holes so that I could put the screws through. And then you can just simply tighten them because these are cabinet poles that I just get from their clearance section. Whenever I see cool ones on clearance, I grab them, I keep them in my stash, and then I can put them on trays like I'm doing here. I also sealed this with a polycrylic, which is a indoor water-based sealant. I like the Verithane version, which I will link for you. It just really helps, especially if you're gonna be putting stuff on your tray. But if you're just gonna put this on the wall like a sign, you don't need to seal it. It's gonna be just fine. I love a good seasonal throw pillow, but at 30 bucks a pop from Kirkland's, they add up way too fast. So instead we're gonna make our own and it's going to be a lot easier to store as well. I grabbed one of these bunny shapes at Dollar Tree because it was the exact same look as the inspiration piece. But if you can't find these at Dollar Tree, you could also just print out a bunny image and create a paper tracer stencil that way. I cut it out on some white felt. I used a little bit thicker felt from Michael's instead of the Dollar Tree ones, and it's gonna give you a little bit better of a look. And then I had this really fun striped fabric in my stash, but you can find the same thing at Walmart and I cut two squares. I'm gonna put them inside out and I'm using hot glue to create my pillow. If you have a sewing machine or you are really good at sewing or wanna take the time to do that, you absolutely can. When I'm doing throw pillows like this that are just decorative, the Gorilla brand hot glue is made for fabric, wood, all the things, and it holds really well and it saves me a ton of time because I make a lot of projects. So to each their own, you can choose your own adventure there, but the glue works great. I'm also going to use that glue to hook my bunny to the front and as you're seeing it's coming together really really great it looks just like that inspo piece but way cheaper than 30 bucks i'm using the stuffing from an old pillow as you can see here to stuff it i sometimes will borrow stuffing from the last season to stuff the new season then that way all i have to store is that flat piece of fabric and then i can restuff it next year the hot glue, if you get in there, it's easy to pop if you want to, but it will stay together when you don't want it to pop open, if that makes sense. So it will hold well, but you can also pop it apart if you needed. And it's also worth noting that if you're more of a color person for Easter, you could easily switch up the pillow fabric and add a colored bunny and be good to go. Now, what happens after you use that tracer? I've got a project for that item as well. I went through and stained mine in this briar smoke stain, but you could paint it, do whatever. But with the stain, I really like to do a two-tone look, especially when like this, you could get some of the glue. Dollar Tree isn't the like cleanest when they attach the wood blanks. And when you stain it, you can see the wood glue. The bottom's gonna stay stained. I'm using some painter's tape to tape off a line so the top is white. I've got this really fun two-tone look. And then I added a little pom-pom also from Dollar Tree to give them a little fluffy tail. This Easter Blessings is a file that will be in the pack over on my blog, and you don't have to add that. It looks really cute without it, but I just like the verbiage on there, and I think it turned out so cute. I found this bunny wreath form last year, and I was inspired because of a mystery box to use this nautical rope from Jamie, the crafty DIY guy, to create a fun bunny wreath. So the first thing I did was separate it because it is pretty thick with the three strands together. So I pulled it apart so I had three smaller strands. Then I started by doing a triple knot of one end in between the two ears of this Dollar Tree wreath form. And if you can't find a bunny wreath form like this, you could easily grab a circular one and then use some floral wire or whatever else you have on hand to make the ears. You could also do a wire hanger. Then I am starting to wrap around the entire wreath form so that it is going to be a nice white linen circle. And then I'm also wrapping it around up and down both of the ears. So then that way the whole outline is going to be that white nautical rope. Once I get back around to the center of one ear, I am tying it off and then I am heading up the other side of the ear just to make sure things don't unravel or get loose on me. I tied it a couple times as I went. 
And then I thought it was a little blah, so I started by thinking, okay, I'm gonna add a bow, but then I decided to do some hand cut felt flowers. So you can start with a rectangular shape and the larger your rectangle, the larger your flower. And we're gonna start by creating a circular piece or oval sized piece, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then we're gonna cut about a quarter inch to a half inch strip. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but we're gonna spiral it around our circle, making sure to leave about a quarter size piece of felt at the bottom. Once you get there, then we are going to start with that short end and some hot glue and start to wrap it around. Once you make it all the way around to the end, you can use that hot glue and your little quarter size piece at the end to finish off your flower. And voila! I ended up trimming the flowers down to make it look more polished and then I used some green felt that I had in my stash to create some leaf shapes. I took some hot glue and pinched the bottom part together to make the leaf kind of pop a little bit so it looked a little more 3D and then I arranged all of my variety of flowers plus my leaves to one side of the head of my bunny to make it look kind of like I was wearing a flower crown. I also made sure to do a dry fit of everything just so then that way I wasn't gluing things down realizing that's not where I wanted it and had to pull it up. I am so happy with how this turned out. It is so cute and all I had to do to hang it was just add a little bit of jute twine through one of the back loops of that nautical rope and it is super cute on its own. You could have it be a shelf sitter or hung on the wall but I am going to hang it over my boxwood wreath that I got at Home Goods. So fun and festive. I love the flowers so much. I grabbed another one of these carrots this year because last year I painted them as well as these little ornaments and I wanted to do it again. So this is my whimsy painting technique that I have done for a variety of different seasons and I really love doing it. I painted the carrot as a normal as well as all of these little small ones because we're going to do a bunch of different projects with them in this video. Then I'm painting the top in just an orange chalk paint that I had on hand and then I'm mixing that orange chalk paint that I put on the carrot with some white so I can create these lighter color circles. Just taking a paintbrush and spinning it around to create some polka dots and then I'm grabbing a smaller brush to create some in the in-betweens that are smaller. Once my big carrot was done I went through with that smaller paintbrush and did it on all of the smaller carrots and let that all dry. Then we're gonna go in with some paint markers to add some whimsy and some fun effects. So the first thing I like to do is add some little reflections to my polka dot bubbles with some white. And then I do a kind of chunked out outline around the top. So this is not all hooked together. You want it to be kind of chunky and broken apart. And then I add just a little bit of contrast to the white highlights. I do a little low light with a black paint marker. I did the same thing to my little carrots and then I wanted to make these into a garland because you guys know me, I love garlands. So I took the little hangers that came with the carrots and I just tied some small little knots. The reason I did that is because there's only one hole in these and I didn't want them to flop around on me when I hung them up. So I decided to take my doll needle, which is just a long upholstery needle that helps me with garlands, string up two beads as well as my little carrots and then these are gonna hang nice and straight down for me. Now for the carrot, I just re-added the hanger and then I'm using these on my blanket ladder in my living room to add a little bit of garden, spring, as well as Easter fun. So I just tied some loops in the ends, hooked it on either side of my blanket ladder and draped them around with the larger one hanging on a hook. Another option for these is to make one hanger. You can add this welcome to the carrot patch decal that is mine over on my blog for you. Add two or as many people as it is in your family if you wanna go that route and that is a fun hanger. Or you can also add names to them to make really fun and whimsical Easter bag tags like I did here. Now every year around these major holidays, I love to find fun things so that you guys can do them for your kids and your grandkids. So here is one idea. You can grab these cute little bunny containers and they fit little snack packs really nicely. So this could also be great for a preschool or to send to school as like a little Easter gift, kind of like a May Day basket, but early. I like to take a little extra snip out of the top so the ears kind of separate when you go to tie it. And then I just held back some of those carrots we made earlier for the garlands, added Finn's name with some black vinyl, and it was super easy peasy. 
This is so fun if you want to do an alternative to an Easter basket. So this is a great way to give a gift. There's not a ton of waste. There's not a ton of stuff that they got to take home and find a spot for. These would also fit some little Hot Wheels cars really well. So that's a fun idea to let people know you're thinking of them without giving them a ton, ton of stuff or a full basket. You can also add vinyl right to the bags like I did with these carrots. I cut out the three names for Finn, Ben, and Delia. Those are my niece and nephew. And this would be something that I could give them. They would have something fun in there, whether it be a snack or a Hot Wheels car or glow sticks, just a couple different ideas. It's really cute and it's themed, but it's not a ton of stuff from their aunt, uncle, whatever, that they have to find a spot for. This is a fun idea to let them know you're thinking about them without a ton of extra waste. Up next is another dupe and one of my favorite things to recreate are these Kirkland centerpieces because they are selling for so much money and you can make them for so much less. So I'm going to use this wood box I made for my Christmas centerpiece. So check out that video if you want to see how I made it. You can also purchase them at Michael's pre-made. Then I hit up the Michael's flower section because it is on sale 40% off and they have some beautiful florals that fit the overall motif that I was going for. I grabbed this big pick with some fuzzy eucalyptus as well as some other ones that match the inspo and I also grabbed some Dollar Tree floral foam. So the first thing I like to do when I'm making an arrangement is use tin snips or miter shears to cut all of the little branches off of that main piece on the pick, just because that's going to help you get a more polished look. Another thing I do is remove these under leaves because they don't match my overall look and that can make it look tacky and a little cheap. So I'm going to remove that and then I'm going to keep that kind of ethereal, lighter French cottage look. So once I put down all of my floral foam, I'm gonna start by creating a bed of this fuzzy eucalyptus. So some of them I cut in half to help with different heights, some of them I used fully. I'm putting them in at an angle, so then that way I can create this bed for my flowers to sit on. And here is what that looked like. So it doesn't have to be fully covered up of the floral foam, but you wanna to try to get a decent base. Now the leaves on these yellow plants are a perfect coloration to go with the fuzzy eucalyptus, but if they didn't match or were a different color green, I'd probably pull them off just to, again, make it not look cheap or tacky. And once this is full around the outside, I'm going to add my showstoppers, which are these beautiful garden roses. This muted pink is so pretty, and I also love the white with the pink accents. I thought this would be great for early spring all the way into summer, especially with the pops of yellow. And then I'm just finishing it off with some additional eucalyptus that I had left over on the top to have a little bit of it pop out. One of my best tips to get a well-rounded display is to look at it from all angles and when you see a hole like I did here, you can either move your larger flowers around or insert some more greenery and that is going to really help make it look more like a dome instead of one with chunks out of it. So this is going to be great for my dining room starting now all the way through the summer and here are some ideas on how I'm going to make it Easter but I can easily take them off. I'm just gonna add a garland, some fun bunny statues, and then I also added some of those fun eggs that I had in the cloche earlier from Michael's. I just set them in on the eucalyptus leaves. They look really pretty with the flowers. And when Easter is over, I can just pull them out and I'm back to my spring arrangement. I love getting more use out of things than originally intended. And I saved over 50% off of the Kirkland's one doing it myself. And let's keep the Kirkland's train going here with this easy duped centerpiece. I grabbed some of these Easter eggs. You can find these at Walmart, Target. They are the ones that you can dye, but they are just plastic. And I started by just taking my little screwdriver and it carefully popping holes in the bottom because I needed to add them to sticks. These are just some leftover cupcake sticks that I had from Finn's birthday last year. And then to adhere them on the inside, I just took a little bit of hot glue and stuck it up into the bottom of the egg. Then I just grabbed some floral foam I had on hand, stuck them in there so they wouldn't move on me, and then put them into a box. I'm taking a regular paintbrush and I'm just flicking the paint onto here to give them black speckles. Now a lot of you told me to use a toothbrush last year, so I'll have to try that this year, but that is another idea. You can use an old toothbrush as well. 
Then I'm gonna take some floral foam and pop it into a box that I got from Michaels. You can also build your own. I've got a tutorial on how you can build your own, so I will share that as well. But this Michaels one is very affordable and you could just do it quickly. Then we're adding three Dollar Tree LED flameless candles because we're not trying to light anything on fire here, but we do want a nice glow. And then I'm taking my miter shears from Amazon. These things cut florals so nicely. And I'm adding some boxwood and lavender that I got from Walmart. That is one of my favorite places to get floral picks. Dollar Tree usually has a lot, but the Walmart quality for the price comparison, it's anywhere from 98 cents to $1.25 and you can't beat the Walmart picks for DIYs. Once all of my florals are where I want them, then I'm taking my little eggs and popping them in to that floral foam with the picks that I had before. Now you wanna get it in there so it looks like your egg is just suspended. You don't want the stick to stick out, ha, pun intended, too much. And you can tuck your greenery around that. I really love the colors here. And also you could easily just remove the eggs after Easter and leave this up all spring long, which I love longevity in a project. This is super pretty and compared to the hundred and some umpteen dollars that they wanted for the other one, this one comes in under 30 bucks, which is a great dupe and you can use it much longer than Easter. This time for the past few years, at least since I've become a mom, I've seen these Pottery Barn baskets all over Instagram and every year I go look and my heart breaks because they're $60 for an Easter basket. So this year I was determined to figure out a dupe for you guys and I did and I'm so excited. I found these baskets with removable liners at Michael's on sale for 30% off. The larger ones were $20 and the smaller ones were $14.99. So I ended up going with this blue one and I also grabbed this carrot one for decor. Step one is to remove your liner from the basket so it is easier to work with. And then I laid it out how I wanted it to sit on the basket and I measured to see how big I could put Finn's name on there. Now to do my faux embroidery by hand, I went into Canva and I made a document the size of my measurement which was two inches tall by six inches wide. I use this font called Brian Kimberly. I'm pretty sure it's a free download. I will link it down below if it is. And I downloaded the image. Now, because Finn's name isn't long, I ended up just cropping it. So when I went to resize, it was all around how I wanted it. So once it was cropped, I went up to image options at the top. And this is a great hack to resize anything. I went over to the size portion and I changed the height to two inches because that's how tall I wanted it to be. Then I printed it out just on regular printer paper and I used this as a stencil. So I trimmed it, slid it under where I wanted it to go on the liner. And then I also slid my cell phone underneath with the screen illuminated and that helped me see the name better to trace it. I'm using a super thin Sharpie and going over very carefully to trace the name so that I have a guide on my liner and then it was time to stitch. So I ended up using just some Dollar Tree dark blue, more like cotton thread or cotton yarn versus the fuzzy yarn. And you could honestly do this with whatever. I went through and traced the entire thing with a chain stitch and I just watched a YouTube video to teach myself how to do it. So I will link that down below. It's pretty simple, but the way I was doing it with learning and doing it, it was hard to show and explain and do the whole thing, but it's a pretty easy stitch to do. And then when I was done, I tied off the back, trimmed any excess yarn, and I added it right back to that basket. I pulled it a little bit just so it would sit flat, just because I'm not a professional embroiderer, so it pulled a little bit. But I think this looks so cute. When I originally shared this last year, I got so many great tips from you guys. So I think I might make another one this year, but actually use an embroidery hoop. Overall though, for me not being a big sewer, I think this turned out great. It was the perfect Easter basket for Finn. He used it at all of his festivities and I was able to fill it on a budget with things from Dollar Tree, Target, and Walmart. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to share some more Easter basket ideas in upcoming videos for either your kids, grandkids, or other kids in your life. 
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're walking away today with a ton of ideas, also those free cut files and printables so that you can get DIYing for Easter. Let me know down in the comments your favorite projects and also if you've seen anything that you want me to try to DIY or dupe this year because that will be a, another video coming here in the future and I love to make the things that the craft buddies want to see. Thanks again for watching. All the info on the Cricut Craft Fest will be down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!